Hey, a pleasant good day, Sixers fans. This is Sports for Night News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be a quick video as we talk about Joel, the process, and Bead being able to make a beautiful three-pointer, and then Kyle Kuzma hitting the nail on the head with his tweet saying that, I can't remember the exact tweet, but saying that, like, if you have a seven-foot guy hit that shot, you got to be the MVP, basically paraphrasing what he said, and he's absolutely right. But first and foremost, we need to subscribe down below, or up above on the easy to use widget to keep the channel growing to 230 or more by the end of April. Really appreciate your guys' love and support this far. The Sixers, Tyrese Maxey, balled out again, 19-4-101. He wasn't as sexy in this game, and uh, he, he even knows that, but he was able to find his time and find his groove. Uh, Tobias Harris was definitely off in this game. But that happens. Uh, he was good in the first two, bad in this one. Uh, he still was able to get 12 rebounds, though. So he figured out a way to help the team in a different facet when he couldn't really get going at all, score sheet-wise. Um, and then George, George Niang added nine, so he was okay. Shake didn't do anything in his 10 minutes. Paul Reed played a solid eight minutes. So that's why this game, you didn't have the depth, and that's kind of why it took a comeback and a routing in the end to to have this team come back. Obviously, Toby missed that weird hook shot. <clears throat> Excuse me. That weird hook shot at the end there uh, that would have ended in regulation. That was an odd shot. The shot in general isn't, an easy, isn't a particularly easy shot, so I'm not going to get overly on him on it. And he will probably be surprised because I usually do get overly on Tobias Harris. It could just be how Holly Jolly I am because of getting the privilege to color commentate the Royals, having them win their playoff game, coming back, listening on the radio, and having Tom McGinnis go nuts because of the Sixers, then watching it when I get home. The, a lot of things are going right, so it could just be how holly jolly I am in general that I'm not annoyed at Tobias Harris as a whole yesterday. But either way, I, I'm not. So, uh, but when it comes to Joel, the process, and B, also Danny Green at the point, at 9-7, and seven, uh, he's continuing to play well. Playoff Danny Green definitely looks a heck of a lot different than regular season Danny Green at this point of his career, and that is fantastic to see for the Philadelphia 76ers. If they can keep that going, they are golden. But Embiid at 33-13-2, he also had a block and hit. Now, Doc Rivers, uh, people know, I don't do as many Sixers videos on the channel, but when I do, I have kind of been critical of Doc at different times. Uh, well, in this series, not so much, Be and in the regular season I was, uh, so maybe postseason Doc, just like postseason Danny Green, is the best level, because um, that was a great play call, having him, like I said in past videos, not play Thibel much in the first two games, knowing you won't have him for three and four, was a smart move. So Doc Rivers seems to be mending the fences in terms of Maybe somewhat with the fans now. I know he is with me because he's definitely performed a hell of a lot better. A hell of a lot better in the postseason than the regular season this far. Now, this is only three games. And and he helped the team make the adjustments also, which I didn't see as much in the regular season, to help, pre uh, not prevent, to help pre um, prevail that comeback, I should say, yesterday. So I think all that put together is Doc Rivers being much better in the postseason. But again, it's only three games. This is only three games from this team. But I think it's a great three-game sample size because they smoked them in two, found out a different way to win in game three, having a comeback victory, and then draw the process and beat who better win the damn MVP, Nikola. I understand Nikola Jokic has good stats, but let's stop doing things just by the damn stat sheet. If you watch basketball, like, and I'm not even, like, basketball is my fourth sport, and I'm the one saying this, so what the hell's wrong with people that actually vote on it? And the players are the ones saying this. And Bede should be the MVP. Jokic is fantastic, don't get me wrong. He's a triple-double machine, but guess what he's only good at? Offense. The only reason he ever has decent defensive grades in certain games is he's big as heck. And so obviously he's going to get blocks and defensive rebounds. It's not because he's good at defense, he sucks at defense. Joel Embiid is fantastic on both ends. He's fantastic as a scorer, fantastic, and even sometimes when he has to pick up guards. How many centers do you know when they have to pick up a damn guard that they actually guard them really well? Uh, like, th th to me, it's just pure stupidity, honestly, um, by the writers. And I know I'm somebody that wants to grow media and be in the writing and stuff, 
But I don't need to be someone that ever votes on that stuff because I think those people are wrong here for the time anyway. So I would just be calling them out here for the time just like I'm doing right now. Um, <clears throat> the, it, it's stupid. It's baloney. If, if, if MB doesn't win the MVP, it's rigged against the Sixers. It's 100% rigged against the process, and Markel Fultz has it right. If Joel Embiid does not win the MVP, it is rigged against the process, and you heard it here, not here first because multiple people have said it, but you heard it here that it is rigged against the Sixers process that has worked. And guess who's imitating the process but just happens to have a better star at the helm while doing it? The damn Oklahoma City Thunder. They just don't care because they're not a big market team. But anyway, peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Let's get a sweep Sixers. Peace out and stay safe, everybody.